Did you know that there is a lost eighth principle of hermetics that arguably is the most important one that ties all of the other ones together? Now, many people are aware of the seven hermetic principles and how powerful they can be when applied, but there are very few who know about this all important eighth principle. And utilizing this eighth principle alongside the other seven can take your results to the next level. And like I said, it can be considered one of the most crucial that when applied allows all the other ones to work in your life powerfully. And so in this video, I'll be covering what this eighth principle is in more depth and more importantly, how to apply it on your own in your own life so that you are getting incredible results. Now, before we go over what this eighth principle is, how to apply it, we need to just briefly go over the seven hermetic principles. Now, I'm not going to do a deep dive on these principles because I've already have a video that's basically an overview of these principles, some things you need to know. And I will link that down below if you want to go watch that as well. But I'm just going to give you what these are um, because it is important to understand this before we get to the so-called lost principle or the eighth principle uh, to know the seven that come before it. And so the seven principles of hermetics are, is the principle of mentalism, the principle of correspondence, the principle of vibration, principle of polarity, principle of rhythm, principle of cause and effect, and the principle of gender. Now, just understanding and especially adhering to these seven principles is going to make incredible changes in your life. You know, these are what we call first principle. These basically means these are core foundational principles. A lot of other principles are built up from these principles or combine a few of these principles. But ultimately, these are first principles when it comes to the laws of the universe, the laws of nature. And their importance can't be overstated in how they affect your life. And it's why so many ancient cultures, so many masters, even, you know, high society, you know, elite classes have coveted these principles and the eighth, which we'll get into, because they work. They are provably true. They work if you apply them. And they're actually working in your life always it's just that most people aren't aware of them and therefore don't know how to act in accordance to them, which means you can't activate them in the ways that you want in your life, which will bring you favorable results. But this stuff is highly coveted. So much of it has also been shrouded in mystery. So much of it has been given to the public in incomplete forms to keep people kind of off the trail, you know, kind of give a little bit of what works, but then remove some of the puzzle pieces so you never get the complete picture. It's like kind of taking a few gears out of a machine or a few cogs out of a machine. You maybe have most of the cogs, but without those crucial, maybe even linchpin cogs, the machine's not going to work or at least not work that effectively at all. And so the hermetic wisdom is something that I just encourage and invite you to really dive into and look into because it's just going to help you be able to create reality, to draw in the reality that you want. If you want to know how to create reality, the secrets seriously lie within the seven hermetic principles and most importantly in the application of the seven hermetic principles, not just knowing it, because again, I, what I like to say, it's an amazing saying, knowing and not doing is the same as not knowing. It is the application of that knowing that is gonna bring about the results. So these seven hermetic principles are the immutable kind of first principles of the laws of nature, of life, and that's why they're so crucial to learn and understand. I've already given you some resources there in the video. I'll link down below if you want to learn more about that. I'll link it towards the end as well of this video. And I also recommend reading the Kabbalion if you haven't already. That goes over the seven hermetic principles. These ones specifically that I just mentioned, not the eighth one, but it goes over to seven. And uh, it's a great way to get a real good working understanding of these principles. Now, the eighth principle is one that has to be present for things to manifest in your life, for results to come about. Now, the thing about this is it's actually more simple than you think. Uh, like a lot of these principles, like cause and effect is actually very simple, but have you been applying it? You know, the uh, law of polarity or the principle of polarity, it's pretty simple, you know, in a sense of like, you can go deeper and deeper with it. But the idea is like, okay, that makes sense, but are you applying it? And it's gonna be the same for this one. And so that's why it's important to have the awareness because once you have the awareness and you start applying it, you can keep applying it intentionally then randomly finding yourself using it from time to time, which will give you spotty results. And so this is known as the generative 
principle that generates so much in your life. You know, you can also look at the term genesis that kind of relates to it as well. And we can just call this, as Mark Passio would actually call it, which I'm going to give you some stuff of his later, the principle of care. And he likes to say the principle of care with like a capital C, with like all the letters capitalized, and I'll explain um, to the best I can why that is. But it's called the principle of care, or known as the generative principle. One way he explained it, which I really, really love, is if you look at a seed of life, if you know what that is, it's kind of like the seed that from it bears everything that's actually manifest in our life. You know, from a seed is which everything grows. You're planting seeds all the time in your life, energetically, mentally, and even physically. And each seven uh, circles in the seed of life, those first seven circles that you see, represent a different principle of hermetics, or these first principles. So the principle of mentalism, the principle of correspondence, etc., etc. But one thing that he points out that I think is amazing is there's actually an eighth circle that is not talked about, and it is the circle that encompasses all of it, almost like the shell of the seed. And it's one of the most crucial. It contains within it all of the others. And so that's what this eighth principle is. Without this, this all just becomes heady information and knowledge that never actually gets to be planted or grow in your life because you don't have that missing link, the eighth principle. And again, you're going to see why sometimes people stumble across this accidentally, um, but again, they're not aware of it, so they can't apply it consistently because the principle of care is the action of, uh, action I can't say the word, actionizable, um, putting into action principle. Essentially, what are you giving your attention to, what are you giving your focus to, is almost like the water in which you water the seed of life, or what you actually give the nutrients to. What is it you're giving your attention to? And a lot of people like to disregard this and go, oh, I know that, whatever. Knowing and not doing is the same as not knowing. And this is why, if this is not applied, if this is not taken seriously, you will get spotty to no results in your life, especially with reality creation. But if you actually take this on board, you actually apply it, you go deeper into it like you can with all of these, because cause, like the principle of cause and effect seems so simple. Oh, of course, cause and effect. But how many people actually utilize it intentionally? Very few. Oh, the principle of vibration. Yes, everything vibrates. I get it. Everything moves, everything vibrates, nothing is still. But are you actually in harmony with that law in your life? Are you using your power of intention and attention to be in harmony with that principle? And it's the same with this one. Oh, what I care about is what starts to come about. What I give my attention and focus to is what starts generating things in my physical reality. Okay, makes sense. But if you dismiss it, are you actually going to apply it? Most likely not. And the fact of the matter is if you look out at most people in general, they don't care. They don't have something they care about. They you know, care maybe about being comfortable and nothing else, or care about just getting through the day. So that's what they end up getting. Um, or they focus on the things that they don't want, which means they're giving their care and attention to the things they don't want. And that plants the seeds of more of what they don't want, which then bears the fruit of more of what they don't want. And this is why this is so crucial. What you give your attention to, what you care deeply, again, with a capital C, is what you will begin to manifest, is what you will then align to and use these other hermetic principles towards. You'll start using cause and effect towards that which you care about, polarity towards that which you care about about, vibration towards that which you care about. And so you can see how this is kind of seeps into all of these other principles and becomes such a core to how you're going to be able to create reality or if you're going to be able to create reality in the ways that you want. And again, I'm going to get into things you can do in order to apply this principle, which is the most crucial component. Essentially, what you care about acts as a driving force for your actions and your thoughts. And if we look at kind of the cycle of how we manifest, you know, we can look at the mental, spiritual, and physical plane, which I've gone over many times. There are three planes of existence, the mental, the spiritual, and the physical. What you care about is the driving force almost towards all of that. Because when you care about something, it's something that has to do with the spiritual or emotional. It's in your heart. You care about it. You feel a certain way about it. Care is an emotional um, action, so to speak, or an emotional thing. It's an emotional event, right? When you care about something. I feel love towards this. I am thrilled by this. I am excited. I care about it by high, how high the level of emotion is I give towards it. That level of emotion, that level of care, creates a certain level of thoughts on the mental plane of existence. 
These level of thoughts will then inspire certain levels of action that correspond, remember principle of correspondence, with all of the others. Meaning that what you care about will basically determine what you're going to think about. What you think about is going to really determine more about what you act upon, and then the cycle continues. And this is why you get sayings like you get what you think about. Because what you start thinking about, which is elicited by what you care about, is what you will start actionizing. People who start thinking about negativity start acting out in negative ways, start becoming lethargic and inactive. People who think about because they care about things at a certain emotional level, think about becoming abundant and successful and that they already are um, about contribution and helping others, about giving back, about building themselves themselves up so that they're completely confident and loving, maybe they're a great father, whatever it is, people who think about that most of the time actionize those thoughts and emotions. And so what we care about plays such a critical role in the generative, uh, generative process, which is what you are generating in your life. These are the seeds that you are planting and then getting into harmony with universal principles, which will then bring you its like kind of whatever you're planting. Funnily enough, and this is something Mark Passio actually went over, if you look at the G in Freemasonry, you know, it has that compass and it kind of has a G, you know, I'll flash it up on screen. Many people have different ideas on what this represents, but apparently beyond the 32nd degree, so we're getting to 33rd degree uh, Freemasonry at this point, the G stands for degenerative process, the eighth principle. That's what it actually stands for in kind of esoteric uh, Freemasonry. And that's because people at that level understand the importance of this. So I think it's a cool thing to just recognize that people who understand universal principles at such a high level, you know, regardless of what you think of these organizations or whatever, and I'm not even saying I align with these organizations, but what I do know is that they know the secrets to the universe. They've coveted this information. They've gone into it deeply for millennia, for generations upon generations upon generations. And at the highest levels, they understand that that G that they put in there and the higher level ones put in there stands for this eighth principle. So what do you care enough about to put your will behind, to put your action behind, to really commit to in your life? Because whatever that is, is what you will start creating. Whatever that is, is what you plant and then will keep giving attention to and will grow in your life. There is no getting around this. There's no real two ways about this. Whatever it is you care about. And again, not care from kind of a shallow way, like why well, say I care about this? I say I care about that. What are you demonstrating that you care about? Because again, a lot of people give lip service to I care about X, Y, and Z, and then they spend maybe 1% of their time actually focused on that thing, thinking about it, feeling about it, really even getting focused in on how they feel about it, building that energy, you know, thinking about these things. They're thinking about all other kinds of things, you know, how this person victimized them or, or thinking negatively all the time. And ultimately, based on this principle, as far as the principle is concerned, if you're thinking of what you don't want all the time, that's what you care about with this principle. That's what you're giving energy towards. If you're thinking about all the ways in which you've been treated unfairly, that's what you care about, right? Where your focus goes, attention flows. And it is just brought about again by this first principle of care that what you care about, what you focus your attention on, what you think about most of the time, how you're using that process, again, what you're feeling, thinking, and then acting upon through the will or gut or whatever you want to call it, that is what you care about. And so, it would benefit us to start finding things to care about that we actually want to bring more of in our lives. And I see this all the time because I take people through a six month process and program, uh, reality creation program, which you can learn more about down below. I actually have a free training and case study of the results that so many people have gotten from this program. It just works for everyone that does the work and trusts the process. And I see this in so many people I talk to who they want transformation. They want the ability to create their reality or they say they want it, but when it comes down to it, they don't care enough to actually put all of their attention and focus in doing that, right? And so it's easy to give lip service to this stuff. It is a different game altogether to demonstrate it through commitment and through actual care with a capital C. You will get not just what you think about, an even better way of putting that is you will get what you care about most of the time. So the first step in this is awareness of where you currently are. So I'm going to give you actually a pretty analytical tool to start out with. And some of you may have resistance towards this. I certainly did 
when I first um, was given this tool um, many years ago, but it is such a valuable tool. You don't have to do this every day, or you can even do this once every month, once every few months, but it is called a time log. Now, the reason this is so crucial is because it is going to give you an unbiased, objective view into where you are spending your attention, essentially what you care about. You are running certain patterns and habitual things um, because of what you have cared about in the past, which has created neural connections towards creating certain behaviors and habits. And so what you're going to do with a time log is you are going to literally throughout the day, anytime you engage in something, you're going to mark how much time you spent in it and then label it whatever it is. So for example, let's say you have a tendency to browse. So one of my kind of bad habits that I, I still fall into every now and then, but it's a lot better because I've done stuff like this, is browsing on YouTube. You know, Not only creating here, I'll sometimes go down the YouTube rabbit hole and then 45 minutes later, I'll be like, what, what the heck's happened? I completely got derailed. Right? So if I was doing a time log, I would go, oh, I don't like this, but okay, let's say it's in the afternoon. Let's say it's 1 p.m. to 1.45 p.m. I was browsing on YouTube. Was it educational? No, it was browsing. It was fragmented. I was focusing on distraction. I was caring about distraction and whatever chaos I was really focusing on at that time, right? So that's an example. Now you would do this for the positive things. Let's say you meditated from 2.30 to 3. You'd put meditation. And essentially you're just gonna do this for everything. Even if you're sitting down and you get distracted in your own thoughts for like 10 minutes, you're gonna put that down. And the more honest you can be with this practice, the more information you're gonna get from it that you can then actually use to change your actions in a way that's going to help you. So don't kid yourself because it might help you feel better. Again, we wanna to get to the truth here and what's actually going on for you. And so do that, um, that log, really do that time log and see at the end of the day how much time you spent on the things you say you care about and want to bring into your life. I want to bring in my heart's desires. I want to bring in this dream life. I want this new job that just is so aligned to me, this partner, this relationship, you know, this new home, living in a different country, um, you know, whatever else it is, being able to work for myself. And then at the end of the day, you get to see how much you actually care about that from this eighth principle. Again, not what you say, but what's actually being demonstrated. And what is actually being demonstrated is what's actually gonna be manifested on scene to scene in your life. And what this does is it provides you with the data on where you're at currently with this. And again, there's no right or wrong. You might be, you spent 10% in what you actually wanted and the rest not, it might be higher or lower, it doesn't matter. But now it gives you a foundation, a starting point to build upon. Next one is something that's so simple, but I'm just gonna mention it because again, don't confuse simplicity for things that don't work. Usually the simple things, again, look at those seven hermetic principles and now the eighth, kind of simple in theory, right? But it's the application consistently of these things because you're always transmitting, you're in infinite action, you're always sending out a signal, you're always, you know, again, caring about something, thinking, at giving your attention to something. And so don't disregard these simple things, but it's get out into nature more. Get out into nature more. Why do I say that? Because nature is perfectly attuned to natural law, to these principles operating in complete harmony for the most part with natural law. And you being in it can automatically shift your energy to being in alignment with that. Now, it might be harder for some of you to get into nature. It might be easier for others. For me, it's pretty easy because I've put myself through reality creation tools and my abilities that have grown in this area in a place where I'm literally surrounded by it. I step outside my home and I'm in it. And I look outside and there it is, right? And you can build to that. That's something you can, again, if that's something you want, use these things intentionally to make, get yourself to a home, you know, in the future that can allow for that. But do the best with what you have right now and get out into it in my, again, my invitation is to get out into it at least a little bit each and every single day. The more, the better, you know, do forest bathing, ground yourself in nature because it is infinitely hooked into this frequency of the universe, of all that is, of these higher levels of consciousness, and you just being in that environment will wash over you and do so much for you. Next, you need to start from the core, the foundation of the generative principle, which I mentioned was the heart or the spirit. And this is really hard if you do not know what it is you truly want. If you do not know what's in your heart, what your dream is. And so, you know, even right after this video, the first thing I would recommend is figuring that out. Now, I won't leave you high and dry here. I will give you something that can help you with this. So if you don't have a 10 out of 10 thing in your life 
you're moving towards. Um, even if that 10 out of 10 thing right now is, I don't know what that is, but I want to discover that. If that's what it is, that's actually a dream. You know, I don't know what my mission, my dream, or whatever else it is at this very moment. So, but I know I really want to discover this and I care enough. Well, then that's the thing. And then life will lead you to things and experiences that will help that to unravel. So don't use that as an excuse to not do this exercise. But you need to discover, discover essentially what your North Star is. Uh, so that's what I would recommend. Now, like I mentioned, here is the video I go recommend you watch next though. If you do not know what your dream is, if you do not know what it is you actually care about, this will help you to find that thing you care about deep in your heart, to start focusing on it, and to start bringing it into your physical world.